uh, the amount and the nature of gun violence in the United States is wholly unacceptable. That is made, and you can see it right here, restricted law enforcement government use only. Violent crime in America, ATF is way, way, way too small. Out of the thing that comes out the front of the gun, mm -hmm. the bullet, the cartridge casing that's ejected out the back of the gun. Most of the weapons that, that go to the cartels are, are made in the United States. The Mexican government and they, constantly complains about and that. We would be there to provide technical assistance. I, unlike you, I'm not a firearms expert to the same extent as you may be. Misinformation on firearms. So picture this. The ATF director, Stephen Dettelbach, strutting onto CBS's Face the Nation like he's the top dog of firearm knowledge, ready to drop some truths and facts about guns and crime. But wait, hold on to your hats, because what he actually delivers is a load of misinformation that's as flimsy as a paper target on a windy day. First up, Dettelbach starts spewing this wild claim that firearms are the leading cause of demise among younglings in the United States. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold the phone, Mr. Director. That's about as accurate as a blindfolded archer trying to hit a bullseye. In reality, data from reputable sources like the Washington Post shows that firearms aren't topping the charts when it comes to kids kicking the bucket. Nope. It's actually motor vehicle accidents that take the grim crown. So where's Dettelbach getting his facts? Beats me. Maybe he's got a secret stash of alternative data hidden under his desk. But hey, the fun doesn't stop there. Dettelbach keeps the misinformation train chugging along by painting this grim picture of America as the Wild West of gun crime, with us being the odd ones out among modern Western nations. We, we passed a rule uh, that said that privately made firearms or ghost guns. Violent crime in America, ATF is way, way, way too small. Sure, we've got our fair share of issues, but Dettelbox making it sound like we're all walking around with six shooters strapped to our hips, ready to draw at the slightest provocation. And don't even get me started on his ominous warning that data doesn't lie. Well, buddy, maybe you should check your sources because it looks like your data's got a few fibs tucked up its sleeve. Here's the bottom line. When a bigwig like Dettelbach goes on national TV spouting off inaccuracies about firearms and crime, it's like adding fuel to an already blazing dumpster fire. We need facts, not fear-mongering, to tackle real issues like gun violence. So, next time Dettelbach wants to play cowboy with the truth, maybe he should holster his misinformation and stick to the facts. After all, accuracy ain't just a nice-to-have it's essential when it comes to shaping policy that affects us all. Uh, to enforce and to protect the community. Look, everything we do at ATF begins and ends with public safety. Out of the thing that comes out the front of the gun, mm -hmm. the bullet, the cartridge casing that's ejected out the back of the gun. ATF directors blunders. All right, buckle up folks, because we're about to dive into a real head scratcher. The ATF director's epic fails in Firearms 101. Picture this. You've got the top honcho of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives strolling into the spotlight, ready to talk shop about guns. But uh-oh, it looks like he left his firearms knowledge back at the office. Let's start with the basics, terminology. Now, you'd think the head of the ATF would have a solid grasp on the lingo, right? Wrong. The director's been caught mixing up terms like mags, clips, and drums faster than a blender on high speed. I mean, come on, it's Firearms 101, not rocket science. But apparently, distinguishing between a mag and a clip is about as easy as telling apart salt and sugar for our dear director. And don't even get me started on the whole drum mag debacle. You see, while discussing firearms on national TV, the director managed to call a drum mag a clip. Yikes! It's like calling a pineapple a potato. It's just plain wrong. That's our role. We're the only federal agency with the sole mission of protecting people from violent crime. That is made, and you can see it right here, restricted law enforcement government use only. But hey, 
Who needs accuracy when you've got a fancy title, right? Now, let's talk about the implications of these blunders. Here, we've got the head honcho of the ATF, the guy responsible for making and enforcing firearms regulations, and he can't even tell a mag from a clip. It's like putting a lifeguard who can't swim in charge of the pool. It just doesn't add up. When the director of the ATF can't get the basics right, it raises some serious red flags. I mean, if he's flubbing Firearms 101, what else is he getting wrong? It's not just embarrassing, it's downright concerning. After all, if the guy making the rules doesn't understand the game, how can we trust him to play fair? So next time the ATF director wants to talk guns, maybe he should hit the books before hitting the airwaves. Because when it comes to firearms knowledge, it's better to shoot straight than to miss the mark entirely. Uh, the amount and the nature of gun violence in the United States is wholly unacceptable. Most of the weapons that, that go to the cartels are, are made in the United States. The Mexican government and they, constantly complains about and that. ATF's understanding of firearms. All right, let's untangle this web of confusion surrounding the ATF's understanding of firearms, shall we? Strap in, because we're about to embark on a wild ride through the maze of inconsistencies that'll leave you scratching your head. First off, we've got ATF officials tripping over each other's words, faster than a toddler learning to walk. One minute, you've got one official saying one thing about firearms regulations and terminology, and the next, another official's saying something completely different. It's like trying to follow a recipe with two chefs who can't agree on the ingredients. It's a recipe for disaster. Now, these inconsistencies aren't just harmless hiccups. Oh no, they're causing serious confusion among the public. Picture this. You're a law-abiding citizen trying to navigate the murky waters of firearm regulations and you're met with conflicting information from the very agency tasked with enforcing those rules. Talk about a recipe for frustration. But wait, it gets worse. These inconsistencies aren't just leaving folks scratching their heads. They're also chipping away at trust in the ATF's expertise. I mean, if the agency can't even get its own story straight, how can we trust them to effectively regulate firearms? This relates to this notion that uh, what's called a short-barreled rifle also falls under the National Firearms Act. You, you can't just go after the supply of guns and pretend that the shooters don't need to be dealt with. How many rounds does it fire? Well, this has a 30-round magazine with it. This is a 75-round drum magazine. Confusing messaging on gun control. All right, let's shine a spotlight on the ATF's messaging on gun control and see if we can separate fact from fiction. Spoiler alert, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. First up, we've got the ATF's attempt to communicate accurate information to the public. Sounds like a noble goal, right? Well, hold on to your hats because it looks like they've missed the mark by a mile. Instead of providing clear, transparent information, the ATF seems to be more interested in peddling scare tactics and misinformation. It's like they're trying to sell us a horror movie instead of educating us about responsible firearm ownership. And speaking of scare tactics, let's talk about the ATF's favorite tool in their arsenal, fear. Uh, the amount and nature of firearms violence that we're seeing now in this country is wholly unacceptable. We would be there to provide technical assistance. I, unlike you, I'm not a firearms expert to the same extent as you may be. 300 defendants now for straw purchasing and firearms trafficking crimes using those new tools alone. From painting a picture of America as the Wild West to spreading false claims about firearms being the leading cause of demise among younglings, the ATF seems to have a knack for stirring up panic. But here's the thing. Fear-mongering might make for good TV drama, but it's a lousy way to make policy decisions. We need facts, not fear, if we're going to have a meaningful conversation about gun control. 
Uh, and then there were years where they went down. We didn't change our guidelines. I will tell you during some of those years. Firearms dealers, the vast majority by the which are compliant. They are our first line of defense. Blunders and lack of trustworthiness. Let's pull back the curtain on the ATF's laundry list of blunders and controversial decisions that have left the public scratching their heads and shaking their fists in frustration. Get ready for a roller coaster ride of incompetence and questionable judgment. First up, we've got Operation Fast and Furious, a debacle so infamous it sounds like something straight out of a spy thriller. In case you missed it, the ATF thought it was a brilliant idea to let thousands of firearms walk into the hands of Mexican drug cartels. Spoiler alert, it didn't end well. Not only did it result in the demises of innocent people, but it also sparked a massive scandal that rocked the agency to its core. Talk about a colossal blunder that shattered public trust like a drop china plate. But wait, there's more. Let's talk about the ATF's mishandling of firearm export regulations. Instead of upholding the law and ensuring responsible oversight, the agency decided to hit the brakes on nearly all firearm exports. Why? Well, your guess is as good as mine. But one thing's for sure. It's left firearm manufacturers and exporters in a state of limbo, wondering if they'll ever get their businesses back on track. Violent crime and gun crime should be a priority. Terrorism is a priority also. There are other priorities, but yes, sure. it is a priority. I don't know if you're referring to uh, any particular incident or time How many period. instances should we be looking at where you've lost guns? It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. Painful, frustrating, and completely avoidable. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.